Now listen, you don't need to have my size to serve God. Serve God faithfully in what he has entrusted you to. If you are a cleaner, don't feel like you are less. You will be rewarded not for what you do, but by doing it faithfully. God does not reward work. He rewards faithfulness. Now listen, the reason why God does not reward work is because I can force you to work. Welcome to our service today. As we share the word of God, I want to believe that this morning your spirit is expected. Remember, God only satisfies the hunger within. You must be hungry enough. The Bible says, blessed are the hungry. You need to know that God only quenches the thirst within. The Bible says, blessed are the thirst. You must be hungry. You must be thirst because that is what God meets or feeds or satisfies in our spirits. This moment where we've been away from our normal gathering, we've walked a journey of faith. We've walked on our advantage. We've walked on our faith in God's word and his promises. And today I want to give you just a practical way of making sure you keep on keeping on in moments like this. A practical way that gives you an assurance on how you can live your faith in moments like this without losing that which God began in your life. So I want to ask you to join me as we look into the scriptures today, what we call faith, conviction, and practice. Faith, conviction, and practice is our reference this morning. Faith, conviction, and practice. There is something about what we believe that is so vital in our walk with God. I want you to know if there is something the enemy would want to fight out of you, to wrestle out of your, of your life, is to challenge your faith and suppress your conviction and therefore stop your practice. In the book of Job, after all the tests that Job went through, the enemy ultimately expressed what his motivation was. In Job chapter 2 verses 9, in all that the enemy did in the life of Job, his resources, his children, his health. The Bible says, do you still hold fast to your blameless uprightness? Renounce God and die. That answers the motive and the motivation and the intention of the enemy in challenging Job. In all the fights that Job went through, all of us know the story of Job. The motivation of the enemy, the motive, the drive, was about him giving up on his faith and cursing God, regarding him of no value, irrelevant, a God who can intervene in the situations of his people a god you pray to and doesn't answer are you still holding on to your precious integrity are you cast god and be done with it those are the words of the enemy of course borrowing the lips of one of the members of job's family in moments like this Questions are going through our minds. And most of us this morning can identify with this question. Am I still holding on? Am I still holding on to my faith? 
Am I still holding on to my conviction? Am I holding on to my practice? Am I still excited about my walk with God? Therefore, I want to give you practical principles that will help you enhance your walk with God. And I want you to know waiting on God. Last week, part one, we talked about waiting for God. I want you to know that the word waiting on God as an aspect of keeping your faith alive, working on your conviction, but more so practicing your conviction. The waiting on God reflects on serving. It brings the element of giving service to God. And we know by the scriptures, the platforms that God has given to us as a principle of our waiting and serving on him. Therefore, Romans chapter 4, verses 20, brings the principle of faith, conviction, and practice. Remember the reference in the book of Job. In everything the enemy does, whether you lose your job, lose your business, family challenge, health issues, whether a friend betrays you, whether things are slowed down, fear, stress, frustrations, all these issues. And I know some of you are watching me right now and you have a challenge financially. You have a health issue. You've prayed. You've asked the Lord about it. I want you to know the motivation of the enemy is for you to quit, give up. His passion and pursuit is to discredit your faith, challenge your conviction, and stop your practice. But thank God for the word of God that God always brings us a remedy. When the enemy comes in, the spirit of the Lord, the Bible says, he raises a standard. So this morning, I want you to know, the Bible says in the book of Romans chapter 4, verses 20, Know and believe or distrust made him waver. It talks about the man of faith. That which the enemy paints in the life of Job. If you refer to Genesis, you realize the same challenge was painted in the life of Abraham, waiting on God and it seemed like everybody's having their dreams aligned in terms of realization they got married they got their children their children went to school got married moved to the next level of life but Abraham is aging beside aging there was an internal condition that would not allow them to have a child and it looked like that waited and the enemy's intention was for Abraham to question and discredit God by quitting on his faith and stopping the conviction and therefore the practice of what would keep his faith alive would all already be ceased from his daily life but the Bible says there's those men of faith at no unbelief or distrust made him waver. Unbelief nor distrust did not make him waver, did not bring doubting questions concerning the promises of God. Listen, no unbelief or distrust made him waver. Doubtingly questioning God concerning the promise of God. But he grew stronger and was empowered by faith as he gave praise and glory to God. I want you to know something, my brothers and sisters. You have not lost any battle as long as you keep your faith your conviction and the practice of your conviction alive. Don't entertain the sideshow, the loss of material things, the sense of delay, 
the sense of suspension the sense of hopelessness has nothing to do with you because faith is an assurance it's a conviction it's a confirmation actually the bible says faith is a title deed of things hoped for listen friend it doesn't matter who engroaches into your property if you have the title deed you can rest assured knowing when all is said and done the legitimate owner of that piece of property will finally come out i want you to know you are a legitimate partaker beneficiary of god's blessings you are a beneficiary a legitimate one of god's healing and good health you are a beneficiary and a legitimate partaker of long life you have the title deed which is called your faith you are legitimate you have what it takes to succeed you are a, leg a legitimate participant and beneficiary of god's favor you are a legitimate beneficiary of god's blessings abundance joy and everything that the bible offers by faith we legitimize our position in benefiting from the things of god what do you need to hold on to then you need to hold on to your faith do not entertain unbelief do not mistrust or distrust god do not waver do not ask doubting questions do not consider that the promises of god are delaying because you know what god is never late hold on to your title deed keep on to your faith enhance your conviction and practice that which enhances and build your conviction romans 8 38 the bible talks it very well when paul brings the element of listing the things that would not take away his faith his conviction and practice he says for i am persuaded i am persuaded beyond doubt i am persuaded listen you are legitimate you are legitimate you are not a beggar you are not you are not a second hand product in the house of god you are not what the bible calls dogs you are not unqualified you are legitimate for anything and the bible says god who is not a man will not shut his ears and eyes to his children who are calling and he says when you ask for bread he will not give you a stone when you ask for fish he will not give you a scorpion and therefore paul says which i want to echo together that i am persuaded beyond doubt i am sure that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities not things in bending or threatening not things to come no powers not even the heights or the depths not anything else in all creation will be able to separate me from the love of god which is in christ jesus hallelujah to that resolution this morning i want you to express hold on to your conviction don't fall into the trap where the enemy is waiting for for you to curse god to give up to quit and delegitimize yourself by your thoughts i want you to know our faith must move from just believing to a position of conviction you should tell the challenges you're going through that nothing the past the present the height angels death sickness nothing 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 principalities that which is present that which is to come what we are encountering right now let the enemy know that in all this you are not quitting and the bible says about job that in all this job did not treat god 
foolishly. He did not entertain a thought about the unfairness of God, the unfaithfulness of God, how unconcerned God is. I want you to know, God, as we said from the beginning of this session, that God has promised in his word, in his faithfulness to preserve us. But if not, he has the power to restore us. But even if not, we have the assurity of eternity. I want you to know today, you must live your conviction. You must become your conviction. Your faith must become a conviction. And your conviction must be strong enough that it becomes your daily practice or daily lifestyle. Our conviction is an ex our expression for our love. Listen, our conviction is such that we express our love. If you are still convinced about somebody, if you still have a conviction of somebody, you are actually expressing your love, your trust, and your confidence in God. Let our challenges know. Let the enemy know. Let COVID-19 know. Let Corona know. Let the loss of your job know. Let the loss of your business know. Let your health condition know. Let every challenge that comes to your life that you are still convinced about God's faithfulness. You are still convinced about God's faithfulness. And therefore, by your conviction, you express your love, your trust, and your confidence. Tell your body, I love God. I am so convinced that he will never give me a stone for a bread. He will not give me a scorpion for fish. Tell your condition that I believe in God so much. I love him so much that my conviction cannot be thwarted by small challenges. The Bible says, and Job did not curse God, did not treat God foolishly, did not entertain thoughts of hopelessness. I come to you today in the name of the Lord as we worship the Lord with this song. Hold on to your conviction. Let God know that you believe in Him. Let your challenges know there is a God. You are God who is in heaven, who dwells among men, and your conviction is built on Him. verses 30. God takes pride when he can testify from the language of the scriptures in the book of Job. God brag and testify 
about Job and said, Have you considered my servant Job? God took pride in Noah for speaking to his conviction and practicing his conviction because of his faith in God. God gave a testimony of Abraham. God gave a testimony of David. I believe by virtue of what you know, the word you've always received, the practices we've always had, God will stand and say, consider my servant. The Bible says in verses 30 of Mark chapter 12, there is a scripture that you should love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is a command. And not only a command, it is the first commandment. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, our conviction, our faith, our practice on those things that legitimizes our faith is an expression of our love to God. We should express our conviction through our love within our hearts, our minds, our souls, and with all our strength, let God know. I know he knows, but let him know that you know that he knows that you love him. You love him because he's your provider. You don't love the provision. You love the provider that even if provision ceased, you still have a conviction on the provider. He's able to preserve is able to restore, I mean, to, 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 is able to preserve, is able to restore, but is able to secure our future. Listen, friends, our faith is built on our conviction. I want you to note these things down. Our faith is built on our conviction. Our conviction are built on our practices. If you are really convinced, your faith is alive. But that which is a conviction can only be legitimized as a conviction if there is a practice of the same. God loves it. God loves it. And I want to tell you this. God loves it. When you are stuck in your conviction and your confidence in his word and his promises. He loves it. He takes pride. We give him glory. We give him credit. We show our love. We say he's God. And we are not turning to any idol. And we are not questioning his faithfulness. He loves it. He takes pride when we say, what can separate me from the love of God? Not life. Not death. Not even an angel. Not the past. Not the future. Not the depth. Not the heights. Not principalities. God stands on his throne and says, that is my beloved son. Listen, the practice of our spiritual ordinances, therefore, is an expression of your conviction and your faith in God. How do you express your faith? How do you express your conviction? You express them by practice. I want you to remember this. This is vital. Don't lose me yet. Listen, how do you express your faith and conviction and confidence in God. You do it by practicing the established ordinances which makes God God. It creates awareness in your spirit that you know that he is God and it also informs the environment around you that there is a God you believe in. You don't worship idols. You don't worship money. You don't worship your job. You don't worship governments and you are not afraid of life or death or challenges you are more than a conqueror in all this and you can say with the words of the psalmist even if i walk under the shadow of the valley of death i will fear no evil because my conviction says uh, he is with me so how do you keep your convictions 
and your faith alive you do so by practicing what we call spiritual ordinances because by so doing you are expressing your faith in God and somebody is asking what are the spiritual ordinances let me tell you as simple as they may look as long as you keep your spiritual ordinances you are expressing your faith you are conviction in God and you are letting every devil know that you are not about to throw in the towel you are not about to quit you are not about to despair number one prayer is a practice of expressing our conviction in a God who answers prayer prayer is an expression of our conviction or is a practice that expresses our conviction in a God who answers prayer and that's why Luke chapter 18 verses 1 across a parable is told and the parable is about a woman who went I think a widow who went to a wicked king a king who had no regard for man did not fear God and said please help me and the Bible says the king said I have no time for such nonsense I have no time for such person because I have no regard for man and I fear no God but the Bible says the woman kept on going and kept on going remember a woman is a picture of the church a picture of your faith a picture of your conviction the church must be convinced about the God who answers prayer that they competently and consistently keep the practice of prayer because they believe God answers prayer I want to talk to somebody this morning when you stop praying when you stop the practice of prayer when you when you slacken in your commitment to prayer you are actually giving in to doubt you are now unbelieving that which God promises but I want to announce to you as a voice a voice of grace by virtue of your prayer you are continuous practice you are expressing your faith in a God who answers prayer listen friends the conviction must be such that even if the enemy says there is no answer to everything you pray let the devil know you love God so much that you will still pray to God say it like Shadrach Meshach and Abednego that even if he doesn't answer even if he doesn't say we still believe in him our conviction is expressed through the practice of our ordinances do not cease praying your prayer is an expression of your faith in a conviction of practice don't quit praying pray without ceasing because God answers prayer the Bible says pray without ceasing because we believe in a God that answers prayer and we convince that that's why we pray and that's why we practice the principle of prayer Galatians chapter 6 verses 9 it says do not be wary or lose heart in doing good let not become weary let us not become weary in doing good listen look at me everybody listen I want you to note this down you must be convinced so much about the God who provides that you don't entertain a voice of hopelessness loss a state of death a state of despair you should always practice the good works that the Bible says do not become weary in doing good because at the proper time that is the good news about this ladies and gentlemen there is a proper time coming I want God to celebrate and brag about you and say you held on to your conviction you practice the ordinances as much as you didn't see a divine intervention you did it out of conviction because you love me what are the three platforms of doing good works number one choose to be a blessing to somebody choose to be a solution to somebody choose to help somebody be always the one that reaches out don't get into a victim mentality be a solution in your mind be always an angel be the good Samaritan be that which people look up to don't kill your platform of doing good by virtue of helping those who are in need do it even when you don't seem to have nothing listen the woman who fed Elijah in spite of the famine 
in spite of the condition that was always by virtue of understanding that there is a God I come to you today as a prophet as a man of God what you practice becomes your portion what you practice becomes your portion if you choose to be a blessing God will always make sure you have what you need to be a blessing if you choose to be a solution God will always make sure you have what it takes to be a solution so be a source of help number two practice your ordinances in giving to God be faithful in your tithing be faithful in your offering be faithful in your uh, fast fruit be faithful in the ordinances that expresses your confidence in God the provider listen the Bible says God loves a cheerful giver I want you to know every time you give every time you express your tithe your offerings your thanksgiving and not buy into the voice of the enemy that says you have the last flower that says save for the rainy season the voice of the enemy that says you may die tomorrow and say there is a God that preserved me before I had this money there is a God that watched over me when I was in my mother's womb there is a God who supplied for me when I didn't have a job there is a God who watched over me when I didn't have this farm didn't have this cows didn't have this car didn't have these children I was not married I did not know anybody giving as an ordinances is a practice of your faith through conviction that God is the provider let each one of us be a practitioner of that which is of God's word number three the ordinance of, of, of uh, the ordinance of, uh, of uh, practicing good works I said number one is helping and meeting people's needs number two be committed to your tithe your offerings your fast fruit let everything break loose but maintain the altar of provision and practice your conviction on the altar of giving that is telling God I still believe you are the provider number three on that platform always choose to be a blessing to your parents when you support your parents when you take care of your parents they will always bless you I want you to know the words of your parents as the power and the key to secure your future during this moment if you still have a father or a mother no matter their status whether they have it or not express your love to them let them bless you parents always have the key to the future you desire call your mama call your daddy show them love visit them show them some concern it will really 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 express your conviction and the conviction of your faith and lastly we we, we second last we express our conviction by reading the word why do we read the word of god it is a practice of our conviction because we have faith in the god of the bible so i will keep on reading my bible i will feel guilty if i stay the whole day without reading the bible i'll feel unsatisfied if i left my house without reading the bible why because i believe the bible why do i practice reading i believe the principles of the bible i believe the scriptures i believe the testimonies i believe what works i believe what has been written but more so i believe the god of the bible express your faith by your convicting uh, or your conviction out of your practice that you still believe in the scriptures and lastly still tell out about the love of god it's called win winning souls it's about being a testimony it's about being a witness listen friends one of the things you must keep as a practice as an expression of your faith as a practice of your faith as an act of your conviction is to keep on telling people about the love of god we should not stop telling people about the love of god let's talk about this faithfulness let's win souls let's share the love of god that is a practice of our conviction can i tell you something enhance your practice and let the enemy know your faith in god is based on love is based on your conviction and has nothing to do with what leaves and what comes what stops and what continues you love god because in him you live in him you move 
and in him you have your being listen the bible says unless god builds a house those who labor labor but in vain unless god watches over the city the watchmen are watching but in vain you can't take care of your life the singer says hold me safe till the storm passes by be hidden in him practice your conviction pray read the word share Christ this is the right time to share the love of God be committed to your practice in the area of finances your title and let me tell you keep, our time is not giving us room to stay more worship is an ordinance if there is a time to worship it's not you remember the apostles when they were in prison they did not break their confidence in God the Bible says they prayed and they worship and the prison gates broke the chains broke fasting what the right time to fast now that you're not busy fast because you believe in the ordinances of a God who answers prayer can you lift your hands can I speak a blessing if you're not born again I want you to say these words with me Lord Jesus I acknowledge my status that I am a sinner please forgive me and wash me by your blood and write my name in the book of life I receive you today as my Lord and my Savior Amen if you are not feeling well <laughs> there is a God in heaven who answers prayer there is a God who heals if you are not feeling well I want you to stretch your hands this way. I release the action of God's healing. There's no distance in the spirit. Receive healing. Not tomorrow. Not in the afternoon, right now. Would you accept it? I release the healing power of God. To touch the tissues of your body. And restore every part in you. That is having a challenge. Shalom. In Jesus name if you need a financial miracle one of the things is be faithful in the practice that is linked to financial provision you are giving in all aspects but can I pray that Lord drop an idea that will bring a financial revolution in the life of my brother and sister it is well peace it is well Shalom in Jesus' name. In the interest of time, when we take our time and worship the Lord with our giving today, it's a privilege to honor God. Let the spirit of luck know that you still believe in a provider whose name is Jehovah. Our pay bill is projected on the screen. Please don't kill your practice by succumbing to the voice of fear God is your source our pay bill is projected post your tithing post your offerings post your prophetic gifts I believe there are people in this moment God has given you an increment honor him with your fast food some of us have testimonies of things that have happened before you eat let God eat before you test let God have a test. Let God bless it before you eat it. I bless you. Can I bless your offerings today? If you're using your mobile, can I speak a blessing? If you can't post it on our pay bill number, in the course of the week, come by the church office and give your offerings. I bless your offerings today. I bless your type. I bless your convictions on God who is a provider. I bless your obedience to the principles of provision. I bless your testimony. I bless your faith. 
as you honor God may the Lord honor you and in the same action I speak a blessing over everything that relates to you and every person that is identified with you the next seven days are secured in the spirit and in grace I decree that your Monday is blessed your Tuesday is blessed your Wednesday is blessed your Thursday is blessed your Friday is blessed your Saturday is blessed and your Sunday is blessed you are blessed as you come in and you are blessed as you go out no weapon fashion against you whatever fashion shall prosper and I condemn every tongue that will rise against you in judgment and from this altar of grace as a voice of grace as a prophet as a man of God as a father I bless you from this altar and that remains your portion in Jesus name as we worship the Lord as we celebrate the Lord with this celebration I want us to worship the Lord with our giving today let's celebrate God come on join me in your house and let's celebrate the faithfulness of God let's celebrate the love of God let's celebrate what God is able to do and we want to hear your testimony come on post it on our wall let's know what the Lord is saying what the Lord is doing and when you have time tell somebody and share the faithfulness of God in Jesus name what a day what a blessing in Jesus name amen let's worship together let's celebrate together